The next conventional mode is SIMV. In this mode, a specific rate is set and these breaths are synchronized with the infant's spontaneous breaths. Any other spontaneous breaths more than the set rate will not be supported. This mode can be used in the same way as CMV and may be used right from the onset of ventilation through to the end of the weaning process. The infant will make some spontaneous efforts at the onset of ventilation and the spontaneous breaths will be in synchrony with the mechanical breaths. To set up this mode I need to select it and set the parameters as you would for the onset of ventilation. I will increase the breath weight to 44 but I'm happy with the rest of the settings so we'll confirm the mode. At a rate of 44 initially the infant may make some spontaneous effort and these breaths will be synchronized with mechanical breaths. As I have changed the mode the set trigger button is flashing as a prompt to change the trigger sensitivity threshold if needs be. And I'm going to change the trigger level from 0.2 litres to 0.4 litres to prevent auto triggering. At this stage of the infant's ventilation you could choose to enable TTV plus with the leak compensation set to 20%. The volume required is being achieved. Based on the infant's improving condition, the weaning process may now begin. This is usually done by alternatively reducing the peak inspired pressure and the rate. However, as TTV is still on, all I need to manage is the FiO2 and the rate. The changes in peak inspired pressure will be done in accordance with the improving compliance. As the weaning process continues, the infant will make more spontaneous effort, as you will see from the trigger number flashing in the right hand column. The spontaneous breaths more than the set rate will be unsupported. At this point, you may choose to remove TTV plus. and monitor the end tidal volume from the monitoring column on the right hand side. Remember to reinstate the peak inspired pressure from the safe setting to the level that gives the appropriate volume. As you can see you can monitor the volumes in the column on the right. As the infant is being weaned he will be making more spontaneous effort and the mechanical breaths will be further decreased. On clinical observation it may be noted that the infant is tiring and may need to increase the support again. This is due to the effort of breathing through the resistance of a small ET tube. To avoid this situation Pressure support ventilation can be introduced at the onset of the weaning process, as I am now showing you. Once pressure support ventilation has been selected and enabled, it now means that every breath is pressure supported and thereby preventing fatigue. The weaning process can now continue in one of two ways. You can continue to manually reduce the peak inspired pressure and the rate knowing that all the breaths will be pressure supported. By weaning in this way both the mechanical breaths and the spontaneous breaths will receive the same level of pressure support. The second way to reduce the pressure support is to reduce the peak inspired pressure by percentage. 100% equals 16 millibars. To reduce the pressure support, I can reduce the percentage. Now, 
of 16 millibars will be 13 millibars. This now means that all spontaneous breaths will receive 13 millibars pressure support, but all mechanical breaths will still be at 100% pressure support. I can now further reduce the pressure support to 60%, which will be about 10 millibars. At the same time, I am reducing the rate. Now, with most of the infant's breaths being supported to 10 millibars, and the rate has also been reduced, it is possible to extubate him and put him on to nasal CPAP. By combining SIMV with pressure support ventilation, there is a greater likelihood of successful extubation. But do remember the differences between the two ways of managing pressure support ventilation. You could choose to leave targeted tidal volume plus on as you still wish to achieve 5 mils of volume. The peak inspired pressure will decrease in accordance with resistance and compliance. As you can see, there are a number of irritating low tidal volume alarms. And this is because the spontaneous breaths are not achieving the low volume level. At this point, you need to reset the low tidal volume alarm level to a point where all spontaneous breaths are captured. After this, you should not have this alarm. Now, with TTV Plus and PSV on with synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation, you may see large variations in the measured tidal volume. The ventilator can only limit a mechanical breath. Therefore, when it recognizes that 5 mils of volume has been achieved, the pressure support will stop. But the ventilator has to measure what the baby is doing. If this mode is confusing to staff, remove the targeted tidal volume and monitor the tidal volume in the column on the right hand side, but continue with pressure support ventilation.